weeks in a row with an onside kick. How good does that feel? Felt pretty good. Felt really good to uh, to get the ball and then know that we were getting the ball back on offense and had a chance to go score. How have the last 48 hours been for you? Obviously, a big part of this is a mental game. I know that. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's been pretty crazy, but I mean, from the coaching staff and all the all the players, they've just been, you know, super supportive. So that's always a positive. For you, how do you get past something like that? Obviously, this isn't all on your shoulders. It, it came down to that final thing. Yeah. But how do you get past this, move forward, and head into New Mexico State with a clear mind? Um, I mean, with kicking, it's it's always the next kick. So you just gotta you gotta drop it, and move on. I mean, I uh, went back and look at it and. Uh, the last one was probably the best ball I hit all night. I mean, when I hit it, I was like, wow, you know, I just got a hold of that ball. And I looked up, and it's going right for the upright. So, I mean, you just got to move on, get ready for the next one. Did you know it before it hit? You could see that that was going to happen? Uh, well, as soon as I hit it, I was like, you know, I definitely made that. But uh, I looked up, and it was going right for the upright. So I was like, oh, man. So... <clears throat> Like she kind of said, uh, moving forward, um, how do you kind of set the example by, like, I guess, doing just that? Moving forward for these other guys, like, whenever you mess up or something doesn't go as you hoped it would, how can you kind of set the right example for the younger guys on the team? Um, yeah, yeah, just just like staying positive about it, you know. <clears throat> right after the game, I was a little down on myself, but but then I realized, you know, like, I, I had a really good game, and, and even the ball I missed, I hit it really good. You know, you just, it's a game of inches, if it would have been, two, three inches inside the upright, it would have went in, and we could have probably won the game. So uh, I just tried to stay really positive about it. You know, the support really helped, so that's, that's always good. Uh, you know, something kind of we've been reiterating every week and week in and week out is trying to start earlier, I guess. And I say that a lot, but obviously you've seen, you know, we come out kind of flat, come out slow every game, you know. And it takes about the third quarter to realize, hey, we need to really get up and go and get started going. And You know, last week, obviously, they only had six points going into the – going into the second half, but then we still gave up 19 points total at the end of the game, which is something that we can really control as a defense. And the offense has nothing to do with that. And so I think defensively, we have to figure out how to start faster. We have to figure out how to get the quarterback on the ground when we get him running around. When he starts scrambling, that's something we kind of struggle with this game. You know, we got him out of the pocket. We just got to figure out how to get him down faster. You mentioned starting slow. Uh, Coach actually mentioned maybe it was something in pregame. When y'all are going through pregame warm-ups, how are y'all feeling? Do you feel like, I know, some sort of intensity before a game starts, or what is it like for you? Oh, well, everybody kind of prepares for games differently. I'm probably one of the more relaxed people before games. There's a lot of more people that, you know, you can tell when they're ready by how they're jumping around, yelling, trying to get everybody else going. But that kind of, you have to see that as a player and know how a guy gets ready and know when he's ready to play. And if he's not there in pregame, you got to figure out how to get him there before the game starts. And uh, we kind of talked about that as a defensive line the other day, making sure how you know everybody's ready. And if they're not there before the game, trying to get them going earlier and get them into that zone. Talk about the vibe in the locker room and surrounding the team. Disappointed, really, you know. One we kind of felt like we kind of let get away from us, obviously. Uh, one that we felt we prepared well. And then we just kind of left a lot of plays out there on the field, I guess you could say. We didn't play up to our capabilities as a defense and as a team in general. And I think it's something that we got to address in practice this week and kind of <clears throat> rule out those things going into this week, this next game, New Mexico State. So. As a leader on this team, what are you telling the guys in terms of like, hey guys, we have a lot of football left to be played, so let's finish strong because we still have a lot of games left, obviously. Yeah, so that's, these guys? that is a lot of it, you know, getting everybody together and saying, you know, hey, this doesn't have to be how this season ends. And nobody wants this. Nobody's wanted the season to go the way it has so far. And that's something that you can see that nobody's happy with where we're at right now. And that's obvious. And that you have to get them going as well to, well, now we need to change it. Here's what we need to do to change it. And let's get it done, you know. Eager, uh, disappointed, anxious, excited. You know, about every everything there can be felt has been felt in the locker room you know, by, by our guys. Uh, you know, this whole season has just been completely opposite of what we've expected it to be so far. And, uh, you know, the amount of work that we've put in is not shown by our record. 
and how good we are and how good we've become is not shown by our record. Uh, sadly, it's not always shown by our play either. But, you know, just to, if you were to come and, and just kind of walk around and experience it, you know, our atmosphere that we're in every day, the attitudes of the guys, you know, you would think we were, you know, five and one, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, there's still hope. <clears throat> There's still eagerness, there's still fight, there's still drive. You know, nobody is, is hanging their heads, nobody is, you know, sad. You know, we're disappointed, but, you know, we're just ready to get back to work. What is it, what do you think it is, if you could pinpoint something that maybe if it's changed a little bit, the outcome might be different during the game? If I could pinpoint anything, <laughs> I think I would be wearing a, uh, a hat and a jumpsuit on the sidelines. I don't think I'd be playing. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Everything that we've done, like I, I just said, you know, we've, gosh, we put so much time and so much effort and so much heart into everything that we do, practice every day, meetings, film, you know, just it's, we don't slack on anything. You know, and it, it gets us and we feel so bad about it. Like Coach Brown and, and the staff and the school have, done so much for us in the past eight months you know they've given us and and fought for us and we've received so much and they've done so much you know we feel bad you know what have we done to repay everything that we've been given it hadn't been by winning football games you know which that's the number one way to repay you know the coaches and the staff and for everything that's done for a player you know you win for yourselves and you win for your coaches and the school and the students and everything around <clears throat> and it's that's just the biggest disappointment you know so far about this season but you know, there's still plenty of games left you know we could start out one and five and go you know seven and five you know that's a beautiful thing about football and you know we're going to continue to work and we're not going to give up <clears throat> we'll continue to fight uh, as a leader on this team kind of like going along with what you just said there's still a lot of football left to be played so how do you kind of lead this team and, and tell them like we still have a lot to do I'm not giving up, and I'm not going. I'm not going to let anybody else on my team give up. You know, if as soon as we see it, you know, a few of us seniors we talked this morning before weights, and in our positions, you know, it was spread across the board. You know, we're not going to give up, and we're not going to let our group of guys give up. And anytime we see it, we're going to, you know, just right there stop it and set up the appropriate way. And we're not going to let anybody quit. We're not going to let anybody fall off. We're going to continue to fight. I will say this. I was in my red shirt freshman year whenever Dallas come in, and we played Monopoly together in the dorm rooms. And uh, since then, I've, I've liked him as a person, and over the years I've grown to respect him as a player, as a man. He is you know, one of the very few guys on the team that have never slipped up, they have been consistent, reliable, have never had one sour word to say about anyone or anything, who haven't played a lot, who haven't had the opportunity to play a lot, but have never let that affect them. He always has a positive attitude. He's always that guy that you can expect to get 110% out of no matter what he's doing. And uh, I, I I really like him as a person, as an athlete, as a teammate, you know, just everything about him. He, he's a great guy. Did you beat him in Monopoly? Uh, actually, I think we kept the booklet because we played so much. Uh, you know, he owed me, I think it was a couple thousand dollars. So I just wound up taking some property from him. Uh, if my numbers caught him, I mean, I'm confident that I'm, I'll be ready to go, just like I was this past, uh, this past Saturday. You're a guy who's been here a long time. What's the feel around the program right now, and, and how are you kind of you know stepping up and making sure that the mood stays up here, not down here? Um, it's the mood around the program is really, it's it's kind of intense. You know, I mean, when Coach Brown got here, he changed a lot of different, a lot of things. Not that the old way was bad. It's just just different, as people have said throughout the season. Um, but just from my standpoint, I try to encourage as much as I can since I have been here for, for so long, and I've seen ups and downs throughout our 
the past four or five seasons. Uh, I try to encourage as many people as I can to just strive to do your best and stay uh, and listen to what the coaches say and follow. If you buy in, you'll eventually it'll work out. I like the team was struggling, particularly on offense, finding some rhythm, getting in sync. It looked like when you came in that, that it was like a switch went on and all of a sudden things go together. Is that something you feel when you when you get out there that uh, all of a sudden things start to click? Um, I, I, like, I want to say yes, absolutely, because I believe that in myself. I'm, I'm a firm believer, and um, when you do good, it, 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 it motivates players, which is it's just true for any quarterback or any, any leader position on the team, whether it's safety or middle linebacker. Personally, yeah, I think it was uh, – it really lifted a lot of stress, but at the same time, we, we, we also didn't win the game, though. So it also has a burden at the end of it.